All right, everybody. So, uh, yeah, another episode of Grown Men Riding Kid Bikes. Uh, this is a CRF 80 2013, and uh, yeah, I've had a lot of fun on it. It's pretty good. Uh, today, uh, what we're going to do is um, work on the uh, flywheel cover. I had a little chip. I it bought it that way. I didn't know what the piece of metal was in there, and when I was doing a sprocket change, I noticed it. I was like, what the hell? So I went, dink, and it was like, uh, uh-oh. But it wasn't catastrophic. Uh, it didn't affect the uh, housing here that that mounts the pickup. It didn't get into the crankcase at all. It's just a little chip where the flange comes around, and unfortunately that's a part where a gasket is, where moisture can get in there, and dirt and mud can be slung in by the chain. So I'm gonna try a little repair today. We'll see how she goes. Um, I'm gonna try JB Weld. The only problem with JB Weld is it's a permanent deal. It would be a lot of grinding to take it off. I thought about using like uh, you know silicon for a gasket replacement and stuff, but it's a pretty good chip and it's a pretty good amount of material that needs to be filled in. And I just think JB Weld would give it a more permanent look um, and those kind of things. So oh sheesh, I got my beer in my hand. Uh, no judge here. It's my day off. Uh, I have to work and enjoy my day off at the same time. The wife has got me a ton of freaking honey-do lists, but uh, I decided to work on the bike instead. The garage is a mess. I got that project to do. So, uh, But I'll show you what we got. I'm just close up some what I'm actually trying to repair here. I didn't see a lot of videos on JB Weld repairs on this particular situation. It does everything. You know, it does freaking engine blocks. I've seen guys... Uh, well, you know, put JB Weld on the head of a lawnmower, bolt it back together again, and run the lawnmower. It's, it's incredible stuff. It turns into steel. So I'll show you about that. We'll, we'll go from there. Alrighty, peeps. Uh, let me show you uh, what we got going on here. So apparently, the kid that owned the bike before me didn't put that clip on right. As you can see, the closed end has to be in the direction the chain's going to go. Or mud can build up in here and pop this sucker off. And what happens is if the chain comes off on these small bikes, these do not have a case protector on them, nor is there one available. Maybe there is, you could rig one up. But what happened is this chain came off and boom, hit right here. And what I was doing, I had a 13 tooth on here and it was okay. This first gear is like really low in this thing. So my brother had a 14. I'm like, yeah, let's go ahead and throw the 14 back on. I'm pretty, I'm happier with the 14. I think the gear ranges are better. Uh, there's a lot, you know, you can do more wheelies with the 13, but screw that. But what I'm talking about today, what I'm going to try to do is repair this little chip right here. And thank goodness it wasn't a catastrophic thing. If it got any further into this case, the oil's right behind there. And then you're into a whole nother thing. And another thing that happens a lot, if this case breaks, you can break this mount, which goes to your pickup here. And if that happens, you pretty much have to buy a new one of these or possibly get into the case. And what can happen is, this has to be exactly the right distance. So you can't mess around. If this is broken, or I mean, you can't really repair this. Um, well, you'd have to buy this part, take the flywheel off, or retiming. You'd be into a lot of other crap that I don't want to do. So obviously I've got to take this off. I've got to degrease really good around here. So what I've decided to do to repair this thing is have some alternatives, short of buying a whole new side cover to the, it's basically the one half side of your whole, uh, you know, crankcase. Uh, game over on that. I'm not going to take this whole thing apart. But uh, so my resolve after a little bit of research, and I've used this stuff before, is the JB Weld. This is a newer model. I can't tell you how good this stuff is. It's called the Steel Stick. And it's designed mostly for metals. Um, and it, I've read this stuff does really good. It's waterproof. And it also, uh, for porous metals like aluminum, as long as the prep work's done right, it's clean and it's not greasy. So I got some work ahead of me. I got to get that all cleaned up. It's really not too bad. I've seen these just caked. But the other issue is you gotta get all your tools, all your planning done. Because whoo, doo, 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 there it is. This has the shortest cure time of anything. As you can see, the set time is only five minutes, which really, I guesstimate, you got about two to three minutes of working time. And then your cure time's an hour. And it cures to a dark gray, which mm, might be a little darker than this light gray, but 
I think it's going to match up nice. Um, the key to this is you definitely don't want to go too much on here uh, and have this spill out over into here um, and have it too goopy in there. I'm going to try to really smooth it out, but have enough on there that it adheres to the metal. Really, all I'm looking to do is to keep these components dry. Um, that's the only thing. Um, you know, the gasket seals all the way around this housing. And basically, it's to keep these uh, dependable Honda electronics uh, from getting too muddy and too wet. There is a weep hole at the bottom when you seal the gasket. So moisture can drip out if for some reason water does get into here. I was more afraid about mud. We go in mud and everything. And the direction this chain goes is going to shoot right in here. And poof, I'm going to lose sleep over that. So I'm going to patch it up. Um, it could have been worse. Um, I'll show you what the final deal is. Um, yeah, I'm going to work with my hands, you know, sorry for you folks in California that say, yeah, this could cause cancer in the state of California. I'm sure there's a warning on here somewhere, but I guess you're safe in every other state. It's just California you get cancer. I don't know, but, uh, I don't think you can do it with gloves. I really have to manipulate this crap in there. So I'm going to go for it with my bare hands. Um, if you've never used this before, it's a two-part epoxy. You peel a piece off. There's a center core, and you start mushing it around until all the color gets the same. And then you, you start working. Uh, it goes into a solid steel thing. And my other advice to you guys is, is don't go, like, heavy and think, oh, yay, I'm going to just sand what I don't need off. I've used this stuff before. It says it's easy sanding. I haven't found it to be. You'll be on it all day long. Just to give you a shot, let me see if I can do this. i got the iPhone jiggling around here. Um, so there it is. That's a, a flat edge that I put on there. So the hole is going to be about that big, right where the chain will sling stuff. As you can see, it's a fairly good-sized hole. You can almost put a piece of tape over it. Like I said, it's there's no oil in here. There's nothing catastrophic in there. But, you know, I wanted to keep my Honda electronics in good shape. But as you can see, the gasket will meet there and seal this off. And I got a chunk that big missing. Thank God it was only a chunk and not into the case altogether. I've heard of guys repairing. Holy cow, unbelievable repairs with this stuff. And um, so um, we'll go from there. I'll see what it is. I got to take that sprocket off and we'll, we'll see what goes. All right, everybody. So it's a couple days later. I had to work yesterday. And uh, my brother came over. We took a look at it. I gooped it up and uh, he had a really good idea. Um, it looked pretty good, but trying to get a flat edge to get that level to where the gasket's going to meet was like, I don't know, it was a dicey proposition. So what we did was we I left a little, just a teeny bit of extra goop there, and I used Silgly brake parts cleaner. And what I did was after I put the goo on there, I gooed it up good with that silicone, and then right where the gasket's going to meet, I gooed it up too. And what I did was I mounted the uh, cover back on and let it set so hopefully it's going to make like a really nice uh meeting point for the gasket and the and the seal so you know we'll see how it goes i don't know could be a disaster i also thought maybe the gasket might stick if any extra got out oh boy we're gonna i loosen these up already but you guys will be the first to see in rich msx 125 technicolor the possible disaster or well I can already see the cover moved a little so I think we're okay I'm not stuck anyway that was a big fear if some of that goo got out and adhered to the case oh yeah it's coming right off you're oh, I don't know what you'd do I, I, I think you'd be in trouble I guess you'd have to buy another case and then maybe get in there with a really teeny hacksaw <laughs> I don't know one other thing too for you guys that are all ready to take your shifter off, Honda has made it possible to remove this cover without taking the shifter off, which is a really nice deal. So I got another gasket coming anyway, just in case I wreck this gasket. It's kind of beat up anyway. I looked for a rubber gasket, because as many times as you take this cover off, inspecting, changing sprockets, cleaning out underneath there, I almost wish Honda, like on most bikes, this is a separate cover that gives you access to your, uh, you know, your counter gear there, um, your front sprocket. And Honda elected on this particular bike to have it be the entire cover. Not exactly sure why, but they did. Well, that came right off. Beauteous. There's the, you know, see, it's a little gooey. I put a little of that crap on there. They didn't want the gasket to adhere to it. And let's see. 
Oh, it feels good. It feels like it has a little bit of an indent in it. I don't know if you guys, this lighting is going to be bad. I got the GoPro. Maybe I should have used the, the other camera. We'll see how she does there. But I don't know if you can see that. It's right here. Oh, yeah. It feels freaking solid. It's freaking sears. I'm going to get a clean clean that up. But wow. Oh, you can see that, though. But, man, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you, JB Weld. You could also get in there with a really, like, a teeny drum sander that you get on a Dremel and just kind of clean it up and really make it look like the real deal. Let's see what the deal is. So I got to put that sprocket back on, and we'll go from there. So a uh, success story for those of you that are a little bit of a, have a fear about uh, JB Weld. Again, be ready to do whatever you got to do quick. It's a five-minute set time. It's cures in one hour. I gave it two days, not just because I was busy and had to go to work and all this crap. So, yeah, pretty happy with it. So uh, we'll go from there. Thanks.